Hello, Noble Knitter. It's Nancy Queen, and today we're going to learn how to make these really easy and fun baby hats. They're knitted in the round. They use double pointed needles. Now, don't freak out and don't tune out because I'm going to show you exactly how to use these needles, and you'll become a master by the time this hat is done. You'll also learn to decrease in the round and knit eye cord. So there's a lot to learn in this video. Let's dive right in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified every time I post. You'll need a skein of Knit Picks Comfy Color Mist Yarn, a set of size 8 double pointed needles, a stitch marker, a finishing needle, and a pair of small scissors. There's a free PDF printable pattern available in the link here and in the description below, as well as links to all of the products shown in this video. So here's our cute little baby hats. They're worked completely in the round on double pointed needles, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that step by step. But they didn't, the yarn did not start out in balls like this. It started out in a hank, and that is the way a lot of manufacturers put up their yarn if they're hand dyed or luxurious or want you to see the different um, color variations to them. So what you have to do before you knit it is you cannot knit it like this because it's a twisted up loop. And even when you untwist the loop, you can't knit it like that. You need to wind it into a ball. So what you're going to do is you're going to find this section. Sometimes there's two, three, or even four of these tied off sections to the, to the yarn. And I'm going to get out a pair of scissors. And before I cut, I'm going to make sure that there are no crossed over strands. So it's just the loops. None of the loop strands are crossed over. So now we're ready to cut that. It's nice and clean. And once I've cut it, that's both ends of the yarn. I'm just going to carefully undo that wrapping. And now you'll see I have one end of the yarn and the other end of the yarn. I'm going to cut that little knot. And now I'm going to straighten out the loop so that I can wind it into a ball. And a lot of times you'll see um, you could put this on the back of a chair. You could put the loop uh, over your knees. Or you could have somebody else hold the loop while you wind. But this is how you wind it into a ball. And you're just going to keep winding and winding until all of the loops are wound up in the ball. And you want to make sure that, that all the loops that are on the table don't get tangled on each other. So I want to show you an example of what that looks like when it starts to get tangled because one little tangle can ruin your entire skein. So you really want to take your time with it. I find it a very relaxing part of the knitting process and just go with it. You don't need to have a yarn winder or hank winder to be able to do this. It takes maybe 15 minutes, put on a good TV show, just relax, wind your yarn or some music. And you'll see here on the left, now the yarn has gotten a little crazy there and that could easily cause the entire thing to tangle. So I'm just gonna put that back and continue with my winding. Now I'm down to the very end of my loops and you can see they're not really able to stick to each other. So they get a little bit crazy here towards the end but just keep going. You want to use every bit of that yarn. You don't want to um, cut it and throw any of it away. So just keep straightening out your loop and winding. And now your yarn is ready to be knitted. Okay, we are ready to cast on. And if you've ever done a double pointed needle project before, a lot of times it will say cast on evenly over three or four needles. Don't do that. 
do this. This is my best trick for casting on, on double pointed needles. So you're only going to cast on onto one needle. So in this case, I'm making the um, newborn size hat, which is 56 stitches, but you will be casting on 52 for preemie, 56 for newborn, 60 for three months and 68 for six months. So put all of those stitches on the needle. Like I said, I'm putting on 56 stitches and they will easily fit on the needle. And I'm using the long tail cast on. You can use whatever cast on you're comfortable with, but if you'd like to try out the long tail cast on, here's a link above to do that cast on. I find this to be a nice sturdy cast on and it is my go-to cast on for almost every knitting project. Now once you've cast on all of your stitches, it's really important to go back and count to make sure that you have the correct number of stitches on the needle. I can't tell you how many projects I've screwed up because I didn't go and count. So now I count every time, no matter how many stitches it is, because when we start decreasing for the hat, you want the number of stitches to be accurate. So I have 56 and when I'm done counting them, we will get into working our first round. Now this is the next step. We've cast on all of the stitches onto one needle. Now I'm going to take the stitches, slide them onto a second needle and I'm just going to slide them as you can see one at a time in order. I'm only going to slide half of the stitches. So in this case, since I had 56 stitches, I'll be putting 28 stitches on one needle and 28 stitches on the other needle. If it's not exactly right, you know, you have 27 and 29, that's okay. You just want it to be pretty even so that when you work your next round, it's comfortable. Now that I have half the stitches on each needle, you can see it's starting to create a fold and that is exactly how you wanna keep it. And I just turn it around. You wanna make sure that you're not twisting your needles or turning them um, upside down or anything so that they get tangled. You don't want a loop in your knitting or a twist, I should say. So now we are ready to start knitting. Um, you can see the first stitch that you cast on is going to be the first stitch that you work as opposed to knitting back and forth. When you knit back and forth, you knit the, first, the last stitch that you cast on. So I'm going to grab a third knitting needle and a stitch marker, but I'm not gonna use the stitch marker on this round. I don't know what I was thinking when I put it on here because it's gonna fall right off in a minute. We're going to put it on in a few minutes. Um, it's gonna fall off in a second. You can watch for it. So now what I wanna do is I'm going to knit that very first stitch I cast on. And make sure you don't knit the tail now, it's a little odd because you've got three needles there, but what you want to remember is you only want to pay attention to the needle that has the working yarn that you're knitting onto and the needle that has the stitches that you're knitting. Those are the only two needles you pay attention to. You ignore the other ones. And those stitches are not going to come flying off. That is one of the benefits of using double pointed needles that are bamboo uh, because you won't have the stitches flying all over. Bamboo provides some grip. So I would avoid any metal needles, uh, really slick needles, always opt for bamboo. I've been knitting for many, many years. And even now I don't use anything but bamboo needles for when I'm knitting in the round. And as you can see, I'm just knitting along and I'm going to knit about a third of these stitches. So we have almost 60 stitches. So I'm gonna knit 18 stitches onto this first needle. Now, once you've knitted those first 18 stitches, you're going to grab the fourth needle. Now, this is the last needle we're going to add to this project, I promise. 
but now you'll see how this whole thing works. Now we're going to knit the next group of stitches that are on that needle. And you're just going to knit across all of them. And like I said, you're going to ignore those other two needles. You're only going to pay attention to the needles that you're working with. And the others will just kind of flop along there, but they will get sturdier as you knit and as you get further into the project. This is pretty much the most fiddly part of the project that you're doing right now. And take your time with it. It's a whole new technique you're learning. But once you learn how to knit double points, you can knit so many things. You can knit socks. You can knit cuffs on sweaters. You can knit small toys and other little projects. They just expands, it just expands your range of knitting ability. So let's see, I don't have 18 stitches on there. So I'm gonna take a few more off of the next needle and I'm just gonna set that fourth needle aside for a minute and knit so that I have a total of 18 stitches on the second needle. See how we're evenly spreading them out without having to start that way? This method, I promise you, is so much easier than if you were to sp start out by casting on over the three stitches, three needles and trying to make your first round work. This method pro provides stability and makes it just so much easier to work your first round of double points. So now I have 18 stitches on needle number two. And as you can see, I slide the stitches to the middle of the needles after every single needle that I use. And by doing that, it keeps those stitches in place. I don't have to worry about them sliding off the, worry about losing stitches, see? It's not too tight, but not too loose either. And now I'm going to knit the last needle, which is needle number three. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing, just knit all of those stitches, and then I'm done with round one. As you can see, when we get more stitches on each needle, it just makes it more stable and easier to work. Now we've finished round one and you can see we're just knitting around and around. And the advantage of double pointed needles is that it allows you to just knit tinier and tinier and tinier without having to struggle. So to knit the second round, I'm going to pick up that fourth needle, my working needle, and knit the first stitch. Now I'm going to place my stitch marker between stitch number one and stitch number two. And the reason we do that is so that it doesn't fall off the needle like it did for me a few minutes ago. So you always place it between the first and second needle. And we are just going to keep knitting around, taking our time. Like I said, you are only going to pay attention to the two needles you are working with at the time. You can ignore the other needles. They're not gonna go anywhere and you're not gonna lose stitches. Now this is a common problem. Let's say you set your knitting down and you come back to it and you're just not sure where you are in your knitting. Well, first of all, see these beautiful little Vs? That is the stockinette, the front of the work, and these little pearl bumps or ridges, that's the back of your work. So you always wanna be looking at the stockinette side. Then what you wanna do is you want to find the string where the yarn is attached. And the yarn will always be on the inside of the work in the back. And you will always be looking at the stockinette, front, the front of the stockinette stitch. And then you just pick up your work and continue knitting. That's all there is to it. So you're not making a mistake and knitting the wrong direction. 
So you're knitting happily along without a care in the world, enjoying the knitting, and you set down your work only to find that, uh, oh no, I only have two needles and the other two needles are just laying here. What did I do? Where did I go wrong? Should I panic? No need to panic. What happened is you knitted one whole section that was on the third double pointed needle all onto one. All you need to do is pick up that third needle and then slip half of the stitches back onto the needle. That's all there is to it. And then you'll be back onto three needles in no time. You'll pick up your fourth needle and continue along. Now you will keep knitting around and around like that. You can see we're going to make progress until your hat measures four inches for the preemie, four and a half for the newborn, five for the three month, and five and a half inches for the six month. And it has this nice little roll to it. That'll happen automatically. But we're gonna knit evenly. Just knit every stitch until it measures that much from the beginning. Now you're going to need a ruler, but I'm gonna show you how to measure your knitting to make sure it's the right length. You're going to just flatten out your knitting like this and make sure that that end is uncurled and then just put the ruler up underneath the needle, not over the needle. You're not counting the needle or the stitches that are on there. You're just counting what's underneath and I'm at four and a half inches, which means I'm ready to start my next portion of the hat, the decrease section. So to start our hat shaping for the decrease of the crown, we're going to knit the first two stitches. So I'll knit the first one, slide the marker, knit the second one, and now I'm going to knit the next two stitches together. So I put my needle in both stitches, wrap the yarn around, and then bring up the new stitch, and I've just decreased one stitch by doing that. It's called a knit two together. So then I'll just knit two more stitches and then do another knit two together decrease. That's all there is to decreasing. You can do this. So knit one, knit another. Now go into the next two stitches and knit those together. And you're just going to keep doing this all the way around. Knit two stitches, then knit the next two together. Now here's another problem you may run into. When you're supposed to decrease and you only have one stitch on the needle, what do you do? Well, you're going to take that stitch and you're gonna slide it on to the next needle so that you can knit those two stitches together. So I slide it to the other end of the needle and just slip it on to the next needle. Now I'm ready, I can knit those two stitches together. And you may have to do that a few times throughout this project where it, it's uneven. Um, just depends on how you have your stitches placed on the needle, where they end up landing. And it's no big deal. You're just gonna do that little technique. And we're going to continue along with our knit two, then knit two together all the way around. Now we finished that first round and you can see there's one of our decreases, there's another, and it's really gonna shape up nicely. Round two is really easy. We are just going to knit all of the stitches all the way around, there's no decreasing. For round three, we are going to knit the first stitch, slip the marker, and then knit the next two stitches together. So now we will just knit one, knit two together all the way around. Round four is another easy round. We're just going to knit all of the stitches all the way around. So if you notice we have on our decrease section of our crown, we have a decrease round and then an evenly knit round. 
Round five, we are going to knit two stitches together and then we're gonna do that all the way around the row. So it's knit two together, knit two together, knit two together, all the way around. But we have this stitch marker here between the first and second stitches. So I'm gonna take that off, slide the stitch back on, and now I can do my knit two together on my first two stitches. And I'm going to put the marker back on the needle and now continue with my knit two togethers all the way around. So for round six, it's another nice even row. You're just going to knit all of the stitches all the way around. Round seven, you are going to knit two together all the way around. So again, we need to take care of that stitch marker. So I'm going to slip the first stitch off, remove the marker, and then slide that back on. And at this point, we're pretty well down to the wire. I don't think that you'll need the stitch marker. So if you feel like you need it, slide it back on, but we're really down to just a few stitches left on the needle. And like I said, we're gonna knit two together all the way around. Now I finished that round and I've slid my stitches down to be over two stitches. And now I'm going to do a knit two together one more time all the way around. And I have seven stitches on my needle right now. So I'm gonna to knit two together. And then on that last stitch, I'm just gonna knit that one. I'm not gonna to knit two together because I don't have two stitches to knit two together. But the whole goal is to be down to just four or five stitches left and you're gonna when you're done with this round, put all of those stitches on one needle. So you can see I'm down to my last four stitches and I'm just going to take the two stitches from one needle and slide them onto the other. You want to make sure that the tail of your yarn is at one end. You don't want it in the center. So here we are, we have four stitches and we can, uh, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to make this little cute little tail at the top. And that is, um, we're still going to knit this in the round. It's called I-cord. And once you know how to knit I-cord, that's going to open up a lot of things for you. So what you'll notice is, let me take care of these needles. We're only going to use two needles from now on. And you'll see the yarn is on the wrong side. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide the knitting down to the other end. The yarn's still on the wrong side and we're going to pick up and knit. And we're going to knit all four of those stitches or five, whatever you have. You're just going to knit them. Don't worry about pulling it hard or anything. Just maintain your same tension. And it's going to make this cute little round four stitch piece. It's a little cord at the top. And there it is. So we have the tail is again at the wrong end and we're going to slide it back down. There it is. Slide it back down and knit again. And you'll just bring the tail from the back. Don't worry about the strand being long. In the magic of knitting, this will work out beautifully. You're going to be amazed at how cute it looks. And we're just going to do this for the next for five rounds total, you're going to make I cord. And see how it's looking? It's looking really good. So tails at the wrong end, slide the stitches down and knit them again. Now when you've finished your five rounds of I cord, you're going to need a pair of scissors and I cut mine leaving about an eight inch tail, six to eight inches, and then thread that with your finishing needle. And now I'm gonna go back into my stitches one at a time and pick up those live stitches with my needle. And you'll just tighten that up. And I like to fasten it with a little, one tiny knot that's gonna get buried in there at the end. So I'm gonna make that knot, I just loop it through one or two of the stitches on the top. And then I catch that loop with my needle. 
and now I can really fasten it tightly. And then I'm going to take the needle and go right into the center of the I cord, being careful not to catch any of the stitches. And I'm going to come out in the middle. I'll show you the inside. So here's my needle coming out of the center of the I cord. And I give it a little tug so that it's in there, but that it's not like scrunching up my stitches. And now I'm going to go and finish off my knitting by weaving in the yarn ends. So I look for the hills and the valleys and I just choose a hill and valley to start with. And then I follow that along to this, I follow that valley and now I'm at a hill. So I'll follow that along and go back into where I came out of. And I'll just keep repeating this all the way along until I, f probably four or five times until I feel like that strand is really secure in there. I don't want this to become, to come undone because I want this to be a washable project that, you know, need to be able to wash a baby hat. So by doing this weaving in of the yarn ends, I know that my tail's not going to come out. And you can't see it on the outside. Now I'll clip that close to the work and then I'll just unfurl it a little bit so that it's not going to pop through to the other side. And now I will do the exact same thing with this tail. And I, I like to close up that gap between the first and last stitch. So I come over here, I'm going to bury it into the back, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing following the hills and the valleys. Now what you're going to want to do next is give your hat a nice little roll. Don't forget to go ahead and download that free pattern in the link above. And I will see you in the next video.